Welcome back to the Cricket Today podcast on Tuesday, December 19. I'm your host, Liam McCallion, also known around these parts as the Stats Guy. I'm here with Marcus Barzano, looking pretty good over there. Marcus, how you going? Oh, jeez, compliment. <laughs> I don't know what, yeah. I'm not sure about that. <laughs> Just woke up, but um, no, I appreciate it. You too, Stats Guy. Oh, thank you, thank you. I, mean, I don't know why I'm in a giving mood today. And oh, so, yeah, pretty, looking pretty good himself. Social guy, Liam Mullally. How you going, Liam? Good, thanks, Stats Guy. <laughs> um, I'm excited that the uh, Big Bash is back tonight. Yeah, absolutely. We're all very, very excited that the Big Bash is back. Uh, we're filthy with our yeah nars yesterday. We couldn't get a game uh, last night when there was a big gap. Uh, the Aussies smashing Pakistan. So uh, we're going to get into it. Summer is here. We've got a huge first test already done. Uh, happy that we got the Big Bash back as well tonight for round two. Uh, that's round two in Supercoach. Uh, so today in the Cricket Today show, we're going to cover cover it and preview a huge BBL round two clash between the Strikers and the Thunder, uh, including some yeah nars and some funny moments. Plus, we're going to finish off with my favorite part, some super coach. An interesting super coach avoided all cost segment. So, Leo has come up with this one. Uh, just players that you shouldn't be putting in your team, or we believe you shouldn't be putting in your team uh, ahead of round two in the Big Bash Super Coach. So, let's get right into it, lads. BBL round two, Adelaide Strikers are taking on the Sydney Thunder at the Adelaide Oval tonight. Uh, there's been some weird uh, clashes between these two over the past two seasons. Can you start mm. us off with some yeah and nah questions for this game, please, Leo? Of course I can. So the first one that I've got here is, can the Thunder batting step up tonight, particularly the middle order? Yeah, nah. Ooh. What, do you, what do you reckon, Marcus? Uh, I think, yeah, I think they can. Um, I think well, Rashid Khan was a, was a big loss for the strikers um, with ball in hand. And we just look at even uh, last season um, when the strikers bowled the Thunder out for just Fifteen. Fifteen, yeah. Um, what a joke. <laughs> yeah, it was a world record performance. Yeah. Um, so I think they will be eager to make amends uh, for that. And I think just the strikers have just lost a little bit with ball in hand. So I think um, particularly the middle order, players like Alex Ross, Daniel Sams, I think they, they can step up and make a winnable score. Yep. I'm going to lean towards Nah. I think I wrote down that they can step up tonight, but uh, thinking about that, I reckon they'll be in the back of their minds, that 15 uh, from just last season. You can edge through slips 15 runs. I don't know how the hell they, they managed to only <laughs> score uh, 15. Uh, like you mentioned, I, I was leaning towards Ross and Sam still having a big season, but sort of the end of last season, and obviously they've only played one game so far, my man Sam, he was horrible in game one. Ross, uh, over the last sort of season and a half, I reckon, the sweepologist, they call him, but he tries to sweep everything and he's been getting out a lot. So I'm not sure if I can trust them just yet. So I'm going to say nah for that one. They do. They really desperately need to step up in this one to beat the strikers, but I don't think they can. I just yeah don't trust their uh, depth at the moment. So we'll see how they go. What do you reckon about that one, Leo? I, I think they can, but I'm not convinced by how they played the heat. I think yep. they bowled the heat out for 150. I know it was probably more of a bowling wicket, but their batting didn't really impress me. And I feel with Bancroft and Hales at the top, that's where their strength is with the bat. So if you can put pressure on them and get them out early, it's going to leave a lot to that middle order who I still have a few question marks over. So yep. no, they enough. can, but they need to prove it for me. Agreed. Can we get a, uh, another so, yeah, nah from you? Yeah. Yeah. The, the next yeah, nah here is Darcy Short, the man under the most pressure to perform this BBL season. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, I'll start off. I, was, I wrote a few things yeah. down about this. I didn't really didn't like him uh, last season. He was a big recruit. The strikers uh, averaged just 17 uh, runs in the tournament and had no wickets. I think he only bowled four or five uh, times last season in his 10 games, but he was sort of brought over as an all-rounder. I think Leo's talked him down in the office as one of the worst bowlers he's ever seen. Is that right, Leo? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a, that's a bit far. I just said he... Uh, <laughs> He, he, I don't think he's a very good bowler. I think yeah. out of out of six balls that he bowls, four of them will be half trackers, but he'll somehow end up with, <laughs> with figures of two for 15 or yeah. three overs or, yeah. or something. So. Crap gets Maybe not gets. the worst bowler. But. Yeah. Uh, being a spinner myself, I definitely know that uh, crap does get wickets because a few of my wickets, or a lot of my wickets probably were. Uh, average is <laughs> 17, so I don't really... Yeah, I think he is under the most pressure at the moment for this thing. I think can't just rely on Short and Lynn. I know, uh, obviously, Matt Short, uh, turned into a superstar last year. Lynn, we know what he's going to do. He's going to, uh, every couple of games, going to make a big 50, I think. But if neither of those guys get over your, say, 40, uh, Darcy Short's going to have to make 40 um, and be a lot better than that 17 average. So, yeah, I think he's under a lot of pressure. 
What do you reckon, Marcus? Uh, I don't think he is necessarily, Ooh. to be honest. Um, purely because I think based off his season last season, um, a lot of a lot of people don't have high expectations True. of Darcy yeah. Short. Um, so it's up to him to to defy those expectations set on him by the by the general public. But I think that um, particularly in the the higher order, like you mentioned, Matt Short and Chris Lynn, they're players who can who can take the spotlight away from Darcy Short, which is probably a good thing for him considering his season last season. So I think um, as long as Short and Lynn can maybe, like you said, do a handy contribution. Um, at the beginning of the batting innings, then pressure's relieved off Darcy Short, and that's probably what he needs in the first few games just to get that confidence back. Yep. Yeah, and just before we go into the Supercoach segment later, he is only 67,000, I'm pretty sure, in Supercoach. So if you do think that he's actually going to go pretty well this season, he's an, is an absolute bargain. you got the strikers with the double in uh, round two as well. So yeah, as you mentioned, a lot of people don't rate him from last season. Even Supercoach doesn't. He's got a really cheap score. If you think he can bounce back, then I think he's definitely one to pick in Supercoach. Uh, all right, lads, that's the strikers versus Thunder. Can we get a prediction? We'll start with uh, you, Leo. Who are you picking in this one? Yeah, I think strikers should win this one. I really like their batting depth and the fact that they have also a lot of bowlers. They might not have the quality of bowling. We'll, we'll find that out, I guess. Yeah. But they have a lot of all-rounders that can chip in with the ball if someone else is being hit. So hopefully they get their balance right with the team. I think they will. And, yeah, I just I really like their setup of the team. So nice. I think they'll beat the Thunder tonight. What do you think, Stats Guy? Uh, yeah, I'm going to go Strikers as well. I feel like we're all going very similar here. I, yeah, like you said, I really love their all-rounders. I think when you got Short and Lynn at the top of the order, Darcy Short, if he even just chips in, like I said before, 30 or 40, they're going to make a massive score, especially at the Adelaide Over. They were pretty strong at the Adelaide Over last year. I know they didn't make the finals, but uh, that crowd usually fires them up. I do worry about them uh, throughout the season without Rashid Khan, because I think he's a massive uh, out. But especially in the Thunder, as we mentioned, getting bowled after 15, it's going to be in the back of their heads. I reckon they can absolutely smash them tonight at the Adelaide Oval. I do think the Thunder rely too much on the likes of like Ollie Davies, uh, especially when you get past those few openers and things like that. Alex Hales, if those two don't really fire, then I don't trust their batting lineup at all. So I'm going to go the Strikers as well. What about you, Marcus? Long going to back both of you guys, I think, because... The Thunder last season, you know, they still had their nightmares um, getting bowled out for 15. And I think there's, like Leo mentioned, there's a lot of question marks around that Sydney Thunder team at the moment. Definitely. Um, Particularly off a not a great first game performance, losing to the Heat by 20 runs. Um, So I think the Strikers should get the job done at home. Yep. No, good call. Uh, I think, yeah, we've all gone the strikers. Uh, we've been pretty good on the tips, I think. So definitely at home, you've got to take the strikers. If this was in Canberra or where else? Do I, I can't even remember where else. I'm not, oh, that giant stadium. I think Sydney might have a sneaky chance, but uh, yeah, got to go Adelaide in this one at home, I reckon. All right, my favorite part of the show, Super Coach segment. Leo's chucked in an interesting one here that we're all going to have a chat about. Everyone's player to avoid or trade out for round two. Avoid at all costs, uh, some would say. Uh, Leo, do you want to start us off with your player to avoid ahead of Big Bash Supercoach round two? Yeah, so I'm picking Spencer Johnson to avoid. So he's 114,000. He's gone down 11,000 already. I still Mm. really like him as a player. Like he's a very, very good bowler, quick, great angle that he bowls. Uh, But just based off the first two games, Bartlett, Nisa, and even Walter were the more threatening quicks, I thought, who were picking up yep. the wickets. Uh, and I just think it's one to sort of trade out now because he's got a break even of 72. So he'll most likely go down in value over the next few games. So that yep. means even if he gets a 50 or 55 and actually has a good game, takes a few wickets, then he'll still go down in price. And I think you want someone going up in value, obviously. So he's one for me to avoid. Um, at the moment, may, may feature later in the season, but at the moment, I'll, I'm going to avoid him. Uh, yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't. Yeah, don't mind that at all because the other guys are sort of stepping up, especially especially Bartlett, as you mentioned. I think uh, he sort of surprised me to start the season. He's, he's been dominating. Uh, Marcus, who are you going for your play to avoid? Well, I'm going for, for Marcus Stoinis. Yeah. Um, yeah. My namesake is 106,800. <laughs> uh, he's already gone down 10k. Uh, obviously, the stars with a buy in round two. 
So obviously, got any stars players? Probably anyone other than Maxwell trade them out <laughs> or put Maxwell on your bench, which I saw was interesting. Actually, the most traded player was, or well, my team at least was was Glenn Maxwell traded yeah, out. Very so, weird. Um, yeah, I thought that was a bit bit crazy considering he should be back for for the next stars game. Um, considering their big break. So yeah, I think Marcus Stoinis um, underperformed in round one. So. Well, I traded him out at least, so yep. it's up to everyone else. Yeah, no, I, I don't mind that one as well. Just he doesn't look like himself at the moment. Doesn't look confident. Hasn't really been bowling much as well in the T Twenty format. So he might not be worth uh, having as your all rounder. That pretty much the last four or five seasons, everyone's gone. Oh, we need to pick Storin. So maybe to start this season, especially the way the stars are going, nothing in the stars is going right. So maybe the only player you should really have is Maxi. I, or personally, I think in that side. Uh, my uh, play to avoid is Sam Billings. We've talked about him a lot in this podcast. We said he was a close to a must-have in round one just because the Heat had three games. Now they've only got one game in the most of the rounds coming up. Uh, he's 114,300, bit of a T20 specialist, but Jimmy Pearson is uh, back in this side. The Aussie, uh, he's their number one keeper for the Brisbane Heat. Billings, I just don't trust him to get a big enough score. I think he's going to have a lot of games this season. I think as he did last season, where he gets sort of 20-odd with the bat. Might have a decent strike rate, but if he's getting 20-odd with the bat and his price isn't going up, as Leo mentioned, sort of like Spencer Johnson, who's already gone down a fair bit. Billings has gone down, I think, a couple of thousand, just looking at it now. Not that that's that much, but uh, he's going to have to get a decent score the next few rounds for his uh, price to go back up. Uh, also, he does not going to get those keeping points. Jimmy Pearson back, I think... Uh, you lose, I think, probably 20 points or 15, 20 points if you get a three or three catches or something like that. I think it's about five points a catch or 10 points a catch. Uh, so, yeah, I don't trust Billings to go up in price and I don't see him scoring many 40s or 50s. I think he's in that side just to score a quick 20. And, uh, it, yeah, he's averaging 28 point super coach points so far this season, which is not too bad, but you can definitely afford a player at about 100, 110, 120,000 that can average 30 to 40 super coach points. So, not going to have uh, Sam Billings in my side this week. All right. Uh, I think that's it for the show, lads. We've done pretty well there. We've got through some super coach, uh, get rid of the, yeah, in the super coach. We've got some yeah, nahs and everything like that. That was pretty good. Uh, that's it for the show. We'll be back with this tomorrow, of course, after a huge match tonight. We'll see if the Thunder can get bowled out for less than 15. That would be hilarious, but also annoying because then we <laughs> yeah. have less cricket to watch. Uh, so get right around the show. Subscribe on your podcast app, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, etc. Like and review it, would you? Chuck a follow on Cricket Today and Cricket Today AU all over the socials. That's Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and X. Send in any questions via the socials. Add as Brad McKeegan did the other day. We love your ENR questions if you send them in or anything you want us to chat about. Have a go at us in the comments. We all also love that. Look, Marcus and Leah love replying to all types of comments uh, all over TikTok and Instagram. <laughs> Uh, so that's it, I think. Uh, thank you, Leo. Thanks, that's guy. Thanks, Marcus. Cheers, that's guy. Thanks, Joe, for producing or anything that happens in the show. Even when we freeze, he fixes it up, makes us look good. Thanks to me, and that's another episode of Cricket Today done. We're out.